Sorry for the Yo Mama So Fat. There's actually two of them in this set. So Yo Mama So Fat, her location on the HR diagram is with the Red Giants. That's really nerdy. And of course, nothing against anybody's mother. Uh, those are just dumb jokes. So let's look at this HR diagram, as it's called. This is the Hertzsprung Russell diagram. Um, this is a diagram that's it's kind of like the periodic table but for uh, astronomers it's that useful we put pretty much everything on it remember we learned about luminosity that's what goes here on this y-axis the luminosity of a star remember so that's going to be really important l is luminosity and t is going to be the surface temperature in kelvin remember temperature kind of has to do with color as well so it's maybe not a bad idea to have an idea about the colors right these are red well, I guess I shouldn't have drawn that in any other color than red, right? So this is uh, kind of red here. And on the other extreme, this will be something that's blue because those are the rough uh, ideas about the temperatures, remember? And you should have some idea about the temperature. You don't have to know exactly every one of these temperatures, but know something that like over here is around 30,000 Kelvin and over here is about 3,000 Kelvin. Just have an idea about what the little red ones look like compared to what the big uh, blue ones look like. Remember, red is not very hot. This axis is a bit reversed. You would think that the temperature should go up in temperature, but in fact, this HR diagram, it's done backwards here. So in other words, large temperature here, smaller temperature here. Uh, this is because if you do a, a map of most of the stars that you find, you'll find, and this I'm showing you the diagram because you should be able to draw this, okay? So I'm showing you first what it's drawn like. A rough idea is something like this right here, and these stars are here called the main sequence stars. That's what these are. These are the main sequence stars. So most of them are found somewhere here. It's maybe not quite so fat, like so thick here, but it's something like this. Most stars are found here. By the way, most stars, when they do this, they're burning hydrogen to helium. This is what they're doing. They're busy converting hydrogen to helium in their cores. This is just because most of them, you know, the blue ones are really luminous. The red ones are not very luminous at all. So they seem to be found on this, what we call main sequence. But there's uh, some other regions you need to know about. One of them right here is called the Red Giants. And you have to know about this area down here called White Dwarf. That's the other area. You may want to know over here is actually Red Super Giants, actually, it turns out, up here. But turns out, uh, well, we'll talk about evolution in a second. But the main idea behind this is this. I mean, yes, this is useful for a lot of things, but you can also tell the distance to a star. That's what's kind of cool about it. Watch. Remember to get the distance of a star, we have this equation here, L, uh, whoops, B equals L over 4 pi d squared. Remember that one from before? Well, if we can know the luminosity, we can know the distance, right? And Because B is easy, you can measure that on Earth. So how do you do this? If you see a star right here, what you do is, it's called spectroscopic parallax, even though it has nothing to do with the parallax method. What you do is, you would spot, ah, let's see here, uh, maybe we find a star that... You know, maybe it seems like a main sequence. So from its um, spectrum, we can tell it's a main sequence. So maybe it's something like here. And from there, you know, because you can tell that by its color. Remember, you can tell that because of its peak wavelength. So its peak wavelength tells you its temperature. And temperature and color are related, right? So once you know its temperature, then you can guess at its luminosity. Now keep in mind, there's a lot of sort of fuzziness, sort of, you know, wobbliness in the answer, which means there's going to be a lot of, you know, uncertainty in its luminosity. So that's why you can tell the luminosity pretty well. Once you know luminosity, then you know, you know, D. Right? That's sort of the idea behind it. It's not so simple, right? But that's why I'm just going to delete maybe these steps just so I don't screw up the nice drawing here. But you can tell the distance to a star by this method. So that's why I see her location is within the red giants because red giants are very luminous. They're also big. Uh, so let's do the next one here. This is uh, actually a more detailed, obviously, uh, version of the HR diagram, the Hertzsprung-Russell. You can see luminosity and temperature. You can see a lot more detail. This is the sun right here. So I just want to show you this. This is actually pretty important. You can tell a couple of other really cool things about it. Uh, first of all, see these um, diagonal lines here? They tell you something about the size of the star. So you can see 10 to the minus 3 solar radiuses. In other words, very, very small. That's why they're dwarfs. Whereas, obviously, the sun should be found as one solar radius, I hope. Um, but see, red giants are bigger, right? Ten times the size of the sun. Or up here is a hundred times the size of the sun. And Betelgeuse, for example, is a thousand times the radius of the sun. So those, those lines sort of tell you that. Also, they've sort of drawn them in colors, too. Little red ones over here. Um, and they're, they're literally smaller. 
But there's also something about lifetime, it turns out. The lifetime, you don't have to know this for the syllabus, but I think it's really interesting. The lifetime of stars is also related. So over here, they're only 10 to the 7 years, which seems like a lot, but it's not really. That's only like 10 million years. That's really young compared to the age of the universe. Whereas these little dwarves, their lifetime is, you know, much more than the age of the universe. Which means, you know, these little white, uh, red dwarfs, they pretty much stay forever. Whereas these ones right here are sort of like the live fast and die young kind of stars because they burn so much fuel so fast, they die really quickly. And we're going to learn that they do some really cool things.